Beatrice Gardner, a presentation by Kristen French. Beatrice Gardner was born July 12, 1933, in Vienna, Austria. In 1939, when she was six years old, Beatrice fled Europe with her family just prior to the Nazi invasion. Her family moved to the U.S. from Brazil when Beatrice was 12. In 1954, Beatrice got her bachelor's in psychology from Radcliffe College, and two years later got her master's in psychology from Brown University. Beatrice received her doctorate in 1959 in zoology from Oxford University, where she studied under Nicholas Tinbergen, a renowned etiologist and Nobel laureate. Following in her mentor's footsteps, she originally studied the feeding behavior of the three-spine stickleback. In one paper of the three-spine stickleback, Beatrice provided observations and descriptions of their feeding behavior, where she also tested the effects of satiation and deprivation on these behaviors and the role of motivation. In other papers, she also tested the effects of shock, thwarted attempts, and deprivation on the three-spine stickleback feeding behaviors. Following her doctorate career, Beatrice moved to Wesley College, where she met Alan Gardner at a lecture by Harry Harlow. The two married in 1961, and two years later, Alan and Beatrice moved to the University of Nevada, Reno, where Beatrice studied jumping spiders. Beatrice published several papers on the predatory behavior in jumping spiders. One such paper in 1964 looked at the effects of drive on hunting patterns. Hunting requires a chain of responses during which drive influences the probability of initial and preceding behaviors. The finding was that initial responses require less drive than following responses. In another study, Beatrice looked at the influence of hunger on hunting behaviors and jumping spiders, finding that higher levels of deprivation resulted in higher probabilities of hunting initiation as well as pursuit. Project Washoe. Project Washoe was easily the gardener's most famous study. They cross-fostered a 10-month chimpanzee named Washoe with the goal of teaching her human language. Washoe was the first chimpanzee ever to successfully learn American Sign Language. Washoe lived in a trailer behind the gardener's home, where she learned to eat with utensils and drink out of cups, set and clear the table, wash dishes, dress and undress herself, use the toilet, and play with children's toys, being especially fond of dolls, magazines, and books. The gardeners also instituted strict routines, such as playtime, chores, and meals, to keep Washu on a schedule similar to a human child. Project Washu differed from preceding and future studies on language training in cross-fostered chimpanzees, in that it provided a highly nurturing and engaging environment as well as being scientifically rigorous. Out of the work that came out of Project Washu, several papers were published on her acquisition of vocabulary and phrases. At the time of the paper published in 1975, Washu had acquired 132 signs in her vocabulary. When given a variety of WH questions, such as who, what, where, and whose, Washu responded similarly to, and if not more advanced than, preschool-aged human children. Even from the early stages of acquiring her vocabulary, Washu began to use the signs and strings of two or more. This was often spontaneous and without explicit training. Other research that came out of Project Washu focused on her categorization abilities. Chimpanzees replied to WH questions about 
objects by both naming and describing them. The subjects named different objects from the same category, for example, hat, appropriately. Even when errors were made, the errors were made within the same category. For example, calling corn another food or cat another animal. The gardeners replicated their work with Washu with four other chimpanzees. The four other chimpanzees that were successfully taught American Sign Language were Dar, Tatu, Moha, and Pili. These four chimpanzees used American Sign Language just as Washu had to communicate both with each other and with human observers. Pictured here is Pili, using the signs drink and more as a young infant. Washu was not trained until 10 months of age. However, Moha and Pili were trained from birth and began to use American Sign Language to communicate as early as three months old. This early training enabled the gardeners to study the development of language learning in chimpanzees, as well as the acquisition. Picture here is the vocabulary testing apparatus used with Moha, Dar, and Tatu. Washu and the other chimpanzees successfully used American Sign Language to communicate to human observers. Further, the chimpanzees were able to transfer their learning to similar but novel stimuli. For example, they used the sign shoe for any shoe, the sign flower for any flower, and so on. The gardener suggested this may be due to natural categorization abilities necessary for foraging in the wild. Later work looked at cultural transmission of American Sign Language in chimpanzees. Washu adopted a 10-month-old son named Luli following the loss of her own infant. Researchers did not use American Sign Language while in the presence of Luli, but did observe Washu and other American Sign Language trained chimps using ASL with him. Over time, Luli learned American Sign Language from the other chimps, gaining a vocabulary of up to 50 signs and often using them in strings of two or more. In conclusion, Beatrice and Alan Gardner contributed immensely to the literature on language acquisition in chimpanzees. Their study, Project Washu, was a beacon of scientific rigor and reasonable interpretations that many other primate language projects failed to achieve. <laughs>